Umbria, is a region of historic and modern central Italy. It is the only Italian region having neither a coastline nor a border with other countries. It includes the Lake Trasimeno, Cascade of Del Marmor, and is crossed by the River Tiber. The regional capital is Perugia. Umbria is known for its landscapes, traditions, history, artistic legacy, and influence on culture. The region is characterized by hills and historical towns such as Perugia, Assisi, Norcia, Gubbio, Spoleto, Todi, Cita di Castello, or Vieto. Castiglione del Lago, Nani, Emilia, and other small cities. Contained within Umbria is Cospea, a tiny republic created by accident that existed from 1440 to 1826. Geography. Umbria is bordered by Tuscany to the west, Marsh to the east and Lazio to the south, partly hilly and partly flat, and fertile owing to the valley of the Tiber. Its topography includes part of the central Apennines, with the highest point in the region at Monte Vettere on the border of the marsh at 2,476 metres, the lowest point is at Agliano, 96 metres. It is the only Italian region having neither a coastline nor a common border with other countries. The commune of Cita di Castello has an exclave named Monte Rupita within Marsh. Umbria is crossed by two valleys, the Umbrian Valley, stretching from Perugia to Spoleto, and the Tiber Valley, west of the first one, from Cita di Castello to the border with Lazio. The Tiber River forms the approximate border with Lazio, although its source is just over the Tuscan border. The Tiber's three principal tributaries flow southward through Umbria. The Chiasso Basin is relatively uninhabited as far as Bastia Umbra. About 10 kilometers farther on, it joins the Tiber at Torgiano. The Topino, cleaving the Apennines with passes that the Via Flaminia and successor roads follow, makes a sharp turn at Foligno or to flow NW for a few kilometers before joining the Chiasso below Betina. The third river is the Nera, flowing into the Tiber further south, at Terni. Its valley is called the Val Narina. The upper Nera cuts ravines in the mountains. The lower, in the Tiber basin, has created a wide floodplain. In antiquity, the plain was covered by a pair of shallio, interlocking lakes, the Lacus Clitorius and the Lacus Umber. They were drained by the Romans over several hundred years. An earthquake in the 4th century and the political collapse of the Roman Empire resulted in the refilling of the basin. It was drained a second time, almost a thousand years later, during a 500-year period. Benedictine monks started the process in the 13th century, and the draining was completed by an engineer from Foligno in the 18th century. In literature, Umbria is referred to as Il Cuore Verde d'Italia. The phrase is taken from a poem by Giosue Carducci, the subject of which is the source of the Clitano River in Umbria. History the region is named for the Umbri people, an Italic people which was absorbed by the expansion of the Romans. Pliny the Elder recounted a fanciful derivation for the tribal name from the Greek mu beta rho o micron sigma, a shower, which had led to the confused idea that they had survived the deluge familiar from Greek mythology giving them the claim to be the most ancient race in Italy. In fact, they belong to a broader family of neighboring peoples with similar roots. Their language was Umbrian, one of the Italic languages, related to Latin and Oscan. The Umbri probably sprang, like neighboring tribes, from the creators of the Terramara and Villanovan culture in northern and central Italy, who entered northeastern Italy at the beginning of the Bronze Age. The Etruscans were the chief enemies of the Umbre. The Etruscan invasion went from the western seaboard towards the north and east eventually driving the Umbrians towards the Apennine uplands and capturing 300 Umbrian towns. Nevertheless, the Umbrian population does not seem to have been eradicated in the conquered districts. The border between Etruria and Umbria was the Tiber River. The ancient name of Todi, Chula, remembers that. 
After the downfall of the Etruscans, Umbrians aided the Samnites in their struggle against Rome. Later communications with Samnium were impeded by the Roman fortress of Narnia. Romans defeated the Samnites and their Gallic allies in the Battle of Centinum. Allied Umbrians and Etruscans had to return to their territories to defend against simultaneous Roman attacks so were unable to help the Samnites in the Battle of Centinum. The Roman victory at Centinum started a period of integration under the Roman rulers, who established some colonies and built the Via Flaminia. The Via Flaminia became a principal vector for Roman development in Umbria. During Hannibal's invasion in the Second Punic War, the Battle of Lake Trasimena was fought in Umbria, but the Umbrians did not aid the invader. During the Roman civil war between Mark Antony and Octavian, the city of Perugia supported Antony and was almost completely destroyed by Octavian. In Pliny the Elder's time, 49 independent communities still existed in Umbria, and the abundance of inscriptions and the high proportion of recruits in the imperial army attest to its population. Under Augustus, Umbria became the Regivi of Roman Italy. The modern region of Umbria is different from the Umbria of Roman times. Roman Umbria extended through most of what is now the northern marsh to Ravenna, but excluded the west bank of the Tiber, which belonged to Etruria. Thus Perugia was an Etruscan city, and the area around Norcia was in the Sabine territory. After the collapse of the Roman Empire, Ostrogoths and Byzantines struggled for the supremacy in the region, and the decisive battle of the war between these two peoples took place near modern Gualdo Tadino. The Lombards founded the Duchy of Spoleto, covering much of today's Umbria. But the Byzantine were able to keep in the region a corridor along the Via Flaminia linking Rome with the Exarchate of Ravenna and the Pentapolis. When Charlemagne conquered most of the Lombard kingdoms, some Umbrian territories were given to the Pope, who established temporal power over them. Some cities acquired a form of autonomy. These cities were frequently at war with each other, often in a context of more general conflicts either between the Papacy and the Holy Roman Empire or between the Guelphs and the Ghibellines. In the 14th century, the Signory arose but they were subsumed into the Papal States by Cardinal Giovanni Vitaleschi. The Papacy ruled the region until the end of the 18th century. After the French Revolution and the French conquest of Italy, Umbria became part of the ephemeral Roman Republic and later, part of the Napoleonic Empire under the name of Department of Trasimena. After Napoleon's defeat, the Pope regained Umbria and ruled it until 1860. In that year, in the context of Italian Risorgimento, Umbria was annexed by Piedmontese King Victor Emmanuel II during his march to meet Garibaldi advancing from southern Italy during his expedition of the Thousand. One year later, Umbria, with capital Perugia, was incorporated in the Kingdom of Italy. The region, whose economy was mainly based on agriculture, experienced a dramatic economic shift at the end of the 19th century with the founding of the Acciaiuri di Terni, a major steel work placed in Terni because of its abundance of electric power due to the Marmor waterfall and its secluded position. The present borders of Umbria were fixed in 1927, with the creation of the province of Terni and the separation of the province of Riatai, which was incorporated into Lazio. In 1946 Umbria became part of the Italian Republic. It has been always ruled by left parties. Economy the present economic structure emerged from a series of transformations which took place mainly in the 1970s and 1980s. During this period, there was rapid expansion among small and medium-sized firms and a gradual retrenchment among the large firms which had hitherto characterized the region's industrial base. This process of structural adjustment is still going on. Umbrian agriculture is noted for its tobacco, olive oil and vineyards, which produce excellent wines. 
Regional varietals include the White Orvieto, which draws agri-tourists to the vineyards in the area surrounding the medieval town of the same name. Other noted wines produced in Umbria are Tordiano and Rosso di Montefalco. Another typical Umbrian product is the black truffle found in Valnerina, an area that produces 45% of this product in Italy. The food industry in Umbria produces processed pork meats, confectionery, pasta and the traditional products of Valnerina in preserved form. The other main industries are textiles, clothing, sportswear, iron and steel, chemicals and ornamental ceramics. Demographics as of 2008, the Italian National Institute of Statistics ISTAT estimated that 75,631 foreign-born immigrants live in Umbria, equal to 8.5% of the total population of the region. Government and Politics Umbria was a former stronghold of the Italian Communist Party, forming with Tuscany, Emilia Romagna and Marsh what was then known as Italy's Red Regions. Nowadays, Umbria is still a stronghold of the Democratic Party and left-leaning parties. Administrative Divisions Umbria is divided into two provinces. Perugia Terni Bibliography This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge University Press.